We've now seen that the government can use expansionary policy to shift the aggregate demand curve up and cause GDP to rise above its natural level and unemployment to fall below its natural level. But we also know that the long-run aggregate supply curve is perfectly vertical at the natural level of GDP, which means that in the long run the economy has to return back to that natural level. So how does that happen? Well, let's remember how we got GDP to rise above its natural level in the first place. It required higher wages to draw workers into employment. Those higher wages are costs for firms that get passed on to consumers through higher prices. And that causes inflation. But that inflation erodes the value of the increase in the nominal wage that drew workers into employment in the first place. So to keep those same workers, wages would have to rise even further, representing additional increases in costs for firms. Those additional increases cause the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift up and to the left. And as that happens, we move along the new aggregate demand curve towards the long-run aggregate supply curve, towards the natural level of GDP. That realization caused economists to reevaluate what the Phillips curve means. Remember, we derived the Phillips curve by initially saying, suppose that we're at the natural level of unemployment with 0% inflation. At that point, everyone expects inflation to be 0% because that's what it is. Then the government engages in expansionary policy that causes the unemployment rate to fall, but at the cost of higher inflation. Now, as workers come to realize that prices are rising and that their real wage isn't rising, just their nominal wage, they're going to reevaluate whether they should continue to work at the same pace as before. After all, if they worked a certain amount at the original starting point and the real wage hasn't increased, why not work exactly the same as we did at the beginning? So once we get to this point on the Phillips curve, where we now have a higher expected inflation rate, workers reevaluate their employment decisions and return back to the original natural rate of unemployment. Same real wage, same employment decisions. So now we're moving off the original Phillips curve in this direction to a new point where we have the original unemployment rate, the natural unemployment rate, but everybody's expecting a higher level of inflation. That higher level of inflation gets built into the system. It gets built into expectations about future wages, into wage contracts, and so forth. So now we're at this point off the original Phillips curve. But we are still on a Phillips curve. There is now a new Phillips curve that represents the Phillips curve for inflation expectations of 5% rather than 0%. The government could pump the economy again and reduce the unemployment rate again, but at the cost of higher inflation. As expectations catch up with that higher inflation rate, workers would then decide to cut back and get back to the original level of unemployment. Only now we'd have even higher expected inflation we'd be on yet another Phillips curve that represents a higher level of expected inflation. So in fact, we don't just have one Phillips curve. We have lots of different Phillips curves, each corresponding to a different level of expectations about inflation. These are short-run Phillips curves. They apply in the short run before expectations about inflation change. So originally we had a 0% expectation about inflation and so that was the relevant short-run Phillips curve until expectations change. In the long run then, we end up at the same level of unemployment. In the long run, the Phillips curve is perfectly vertical. So the long-run Phillips curve is perfectly vertical just like the long-run aggregate supply curve is perfectly vertical. In the long run, we always return back to the natural level of unemployment, just as we always return back to the natural level of GDP. But the realization about the role of expectations and changing expectations about inflation in the economy caused a revolution in macroeconomics that changed macroeconomics to this day.